It is puzzling to most of us of the third generation of Needhams while we're not as financially successful as we ought to be. As with any culture, wealth is tied to land ownership and Kumas own quite a bit of land. The first parcel of land, Furner's Lane, was purchased from Ferdinand Morris of Mewsgate, later called Morris Hill, on April 22, 1947 for 14 pounds. Jamaica was a British colony at the time and used British currency. 12 pence equals a shilling, 20 shillings equal a pound, 21 pounds equals a guinea. The land was estimated to be 8 squares chain more or less, which works out to be 0.15 acre in land. This is the land that the family home was built on. The second part of land, Reddy Gully, near Bottom Mews, was purchased April 18, 1956 from Elmira Rosenbauen for 90 pounds. The land consisted of one and three quarter acres, more or less. There is also Clifford Gully. It is unknown how and when this land came into Kamas possession. It is known that this land is now owned by Uncle Clifford based on physical evidence. The postmark of the original envelope mailed with the deed. It is speculated that the land was acquired in 1960. It is known that it was originally owned by Gibbert Needhams of Clifford, St. Anne's, who sold it to Clifton Gordon in February 15, 1937 for eight pounds. The land is estimated to be two and three quarter acres. Clifford Gully is located behind the home in Ferner's Lane. Kumas was a cultivator who worked the land mostly by himself and later with help from his sons. The majority of fields used for farming was lace land. Among them were fields located in the district of Heartland and McNeil near Guys Hill. The land at Reddy Gully and Clifford Gully were also used for cultivation. Among the crops cultivated were tobacco, coffee beans, cocoa beans, yam, bananas, Irish potatoes, dasheen, coker, sugarcane, pumpkin, and tomatoes. The tobacco, coffee beans, and cocoa beans, sugarcane, and bananas were exported to foreign markets. During harvest time, he would make work, hire about 20 to 30 men, some of which he would pay to help him harvest the fields. They would have local cocots called run boats, and this is how they would feed the men. The produce was sold to local higglers, also known as market vendors, exported abroad and sold to the local markets by my grandmother, Miss Eugene, in Geisel, Linston, and Highgate. The banana was picked up by truck by a man called Danny Stevens and brought to the wharf at Arakabessa near Highgate for shipping. The coffee and cocoa beans were weighed and measured and picked up by trucks in Guy's Hill, processed and shipped from there to foreign countries. The sugar cane was brought to a processing plant in Bogwog where it was processed to make sugar, molasses and rum. Higglers bought yams and other produce from Kumas for the local markets. Kumas dug yam every Thursday for this occasion. Kumas was an independent man who did not have to beg from anyone. The banks always offered him loans, which he always declined. So you can take the house away from my pitney, he would say. The story is told that during yam season, he would get a mackerel barrel, wash it, and dry it. He would then fill this barrel with flour so that his family would have flour during the time that certain crops were out of season or when there was a flour shortage. Uncle Zico tells of the time that Kuma's sister, Aunt Mrs., made him give her flour when she couldn't afford to go to the shop.
Tonight, they are so sweet. 